Hello, hi, welcome to today's class. This is a mock tutorial on a legal topic and the topic is understanding case names. So the names of legal cases. Uh, now this topic is appropriate for uh, someone who is uh, just about to start law school um, and so someone just about who's about to be going into their first year of uh, university studying law uh, and yes we're going to be looking at um, how to better understand the names of legal cases. Okay, so let's get started. Um, to start with, why? So, uh, why is it a good idea to know, um, to sort of understand the um, name of a legal case? So, um, I'm just going to go through this quickly. I've, um, I've written the points here. Uh, first of all, the name tells us um, a lot about who the parties are in the case. As we will see, um, the first name that appears is the claimant and the second one is the defendant. Uh, this can be quite useful when you're reading cases um, and you're going to be reading a lot of cases as you're studying law. Um, sometimes the facts of a case can get quite complex, quite um, difficult to follow sometimes. Um, and it's very useful sometimes to just simply look at the name and remember who the claimant and who the defendant is. Um, second point is about um, actually reading the name of the case out loud. Uh, we will talk about this V, for example. How do we how do we read this? Um, is it Brown versus Smith? Is it Brown against Smith? How do we how do we read this? And of course, you'll need this because you will have to pronounce names of cases out loud, um, whether it is in seminars or debates, um, or maybe in mooting. Uh, does anyone know what mooting is? Has anyone heard the term before? Yeah, exactly, so mooting is a mock legal trial. Um, you pretend that you're in court and you argue a case. So um, you will have to refer to other cases when you do that. So it's a good idea to be able to pronounce and you know, read the names of the cases. Uh, correctly, competently, and so on. So, uh, yeah, uh, mooting. Uh, final, final point, uh, of course, we want to be able to write the names uh, correctly in essays because, again, you'll be doing lots of essays as you're studying law. Okay, any questions so far? Any comments? No, okay. Right, so let's have a look at this um, sort of standard uh, case. So I've just put here, um, I've written here, if you have a look, um, Brown v. Smith. Uh, now the claimant always comes first. Uh, so here, Mr. Brown is the claimant. Uh, defendant comes second. So claimant always first. So in this case, for example, if Mr. Brown, let's say, has a dispute with Mrs. Smith, Mr. Brown uh, and he, Mr. Brown wants to bring uh, an action, a claim against Mrs. Smith, Mr. Brown will be the claimant and we will put his name first uh, in the name of the case. Um, another um, important point is this uh, V in between two names. Now, can anyone tell me what V stands for? Yeah, exactly. So V means, um, means versus. Um, 
there's two ideas here. First of all, how do we write, how do we spell, how do we write verses, and then how do we read it? So the way we write it is uh, exactly how you see it here. So it's V. Uh, we do not put, um, sorry, we do, do not put a full stop after the V. Uh, and also we do not write it VS. Um, you will have seen in various non-legal texts, people sometimes use use uh, VS as the abbreviation for verses. Uh, however, when we're studying English law, we simply put a V without any full stops afterwards. Uh, now, in terms of how we read it, read the name of the case, uh, because as I said, you will have to read it when you do mooting, debates, and so on. Um, it depends whether we are in criminal law or civil law. If we are talking about a criminal law case, the V, uh, we read it against. Um, so, can anyone tell me what the name of this case would be if we were, if it were a criminal law case? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, the name, so how we would read it would be Brown against Smith. Uh, if it was, if it is civil law, uh, we read it and so we would simply say in the case of Brown and Smith. Right, okay. Any questions so far? Any comments? Okay, let's move on. Um, so we will be looking at some various um, some, some ways in which the names of the cases can be different from our standard uh, Brown B. Smith. Um, sometimes it can be confusing. The, you can have some letters, some abbreviations that uh, may be useful to understand and will give you details about the case. Uh, and again, we need to look separately at criminal law and civil law. Um, so let's start with criminal law. Uh, the majority of your criminal law cases uh, will look like this. Uh, first example here. So you will see written R. V. Smith or whatever the name of the defendant is. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on what R stands for? Yeah, yeah, so it has to do with the Latin um, words Rex or Regina. Um, if we have uh, a female monarch, it will, at the time that the case was decided, so if this case was decided now, um, the, the R would stand for Regina. Uh, now, the reason why in the majority, vast majority of cases, the claimant is um, the state is because uh, in criminal cases, the person who prosecutes is the state. Um, so that is why the state brings a criminal action against um, someone that has committed a criminal offence. Uh, then we have various things here. The Any thoughts on why we might not want to put the full name? So we would put just the initial, just S. Exactly. So if we want to protect the privacy um, of the defendant, um, especially if the defendant is a minor, uh, sometimes you will not have the full name of the case. Um, you can also have uh, AG. Uh, anyone think of what AG stands for? Yeah, so Attorney General. So sometimes it is the attorney general, um, so a government officer that brings the case. Um, so um, AG will be the, the claimant, the attorney general. And finally, in a very, very small number of cases, uh, we will have a private prosecution. So if uh, Mrs. Smith has stolen something from Mr. Brown and the state doesn't prosecute, then uh, Mr. Brown can bring um, a private investigation 
uh, sorry, a pr private uh, prosecution um, against Mrs. Smith. Okay, any questions? Comments? Okay, moving on to civil law. Civil law is pretty straightforward. Uh, we've talked about, uh, so you'll have the claimant and then the defendant, Brown, as we said, we read it and, the V, we read and, so it's Brown and Smith. Um, appeals, uh, if someone brings an appeal um, against a case, then the appellant, the person that has appealed the case, will be the first one here. So if this was um, an appeal case, um, then we would know that Mr. Brown is the appellant. Uh, sometimes, if we look here at the third point, sometimes the state may have an interest in the case. Um, for example, uh, maybe um, Mr. Brown is upset um, or is uh, you know, dissatisfied that Westminster City Council hasn't taken action against their neighbour, for example. So this is called judicial review. Um, and um, in this case, the state also has an interest in the case, which is why we see the R here. Um, ex parte is Latin and it stands for on behalf of. Uh, so this is what this means, um, on behalf of Mr. Brown. Uh, in some cases, you will see the, this re or in re. Um, this simply is Latin again and simply means concerning or in the matter of. Uh, so you will see this in um, sometimes family law cases or uh, property law cases. Uh, sometimes you will only have one party, which is why uh, we put this re or in re either, uh, either is fine. And again, we can have only the initial of the name uh, of the party for privacy reasons. Okay, so any questions on the civil law um, um, aspects that we discussed? Okay, so let's do a bit of practice. Um, so this case here that I've written, uh, it's a very famous case, you'll learn about it in tort law. Um, so if I tell you this is the case of Donoghue and Stevenson, what does this tell you about the case? Exactly, so uh, first of all, we know that it is a civil law case because I've said and. Um, and because uh, we don't have an R as the claim in the place of the claimant, of course it could be a private prosecution case, but chances are um, it will be a civil law case because these cases are not very common. Um, and yes, we know that Donoghue is the claimant, Stevenson the defendant. Um, okay, what about this second case? What what information can you get about the case here just by looking at it? R, V, Rose, and how would you read the V? Yeah, so this would be a most likely a criminal law case, um, and we would read it, uh, for example, Regina against Rose. Uh, okay, well. Uh, this concludes our um, mock tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and hope to see you soon. Thank you.